Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather. It takes 14 days for today's fur video. Day 10 will take us to the 22nd of July. And uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extension of FS and ECF ensembles. Maybe we're trying to cover weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for uh, August, actually. And I shall get over that for you in a moment, just to say that the first video is there, so it's our 6th UK weather forecast, and we've also released January Friday, check out today's two other vids, if you'd like to do that, like, share, subscribe on all today's videos and content, thank you so much everybody for doing that, for Gav's weather vid, thank you so much everyone, hope you're having a lovely Friday, right, let's start off with centering temperature, the CT has ticked up a little bit more, now sitting at 14.4, that's 1.6 degrees below the 61 to 1990 average provisional to yesterday to the 11th of July. Very cool opening 11 days of the month. These are GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Sheffield today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Sheffield. And we're starting off below average at the moment. Really quite cool and cloudy. Upper air temperatures will be lifting up that closer to average through the early part of next week. Then maybe dropping again uh, later next week. And then just hovering very close to the long term average. There's no sign of any particular warm weather, hot weather to come. Maybe a little bit warmer, as I say, for a while through the middle part of next week. But nothing at all there to get excited about from a heat perspective. Certainly no sign of any extreme hot weather which would be taking the upper air temperature up to 20 degrees at 850 HPA. Precipitation wise could be some showery bursts to come over the weekend and then maybe turning uh, wetter if anything through the course of uh, next week and those wetter conditions might last into the last week of the month. Temperature normally shall be 12th to 20th of July, a little bit below average, you have a relatively cool week to come, and precipitation anomalies for the 12th to 20th of July, most areas slightly on the drier for an average side, but things might trend wetter again uh, later next week, I'll have to wait and see. Latest wind from that from Earth from Nordschool.net shows that we've still got a ridge to the west of the UK and Ireland. We have a trough of low in the North Sea and around that we're bringing in rather a cool and cloudy northwesterly type wind. Okay, let's start going through the chart data. Then, Miss Avalanche's UK Met Europe run is looking for midnight on Monday. Low pressure off the east coast of Scotland and to the southwest UK and Ireland. And as we go through into Tuesday, this trough is pushing across the country, bringing some showery bursts in with it. Second half next week, we try to build up the Azores high, but the next low just rolls in over the top of that. Might turn a bit warmer though through the middle part of next week down. In the south, but overall, still a rather changeable look to these uh, weather charts. I have to say, everything is still moving in from off the Atlantic. There's no sign of any sort of notable or sustained build of pressure. I can't again with low pressure in the North Sea to uh, the east of Scotland and to the southwest of Norway, and uh, we've got another low to the southwest approaches on Monday, and then we're under a trough really from Monday into Tuesday. Again, we try to get a bit of a ridge going through the middle part of next week, but might draw up some warmer air from the south. But another pretty deep area of low pressure to the west of Scotland, uh, heralding, you know, any push of warmth likely to be uh, brief as this low and its associated cold front pushes across the country through the second half of uh, next week. <coughs> So, sorry everyone, uh, the KMA with, uh, again, low pressure somewhere to the south of Norway on Monday and another low out in the Atlantic through the course of next week, looking rather unsettled, no particular building pressure, in fact, probably more unsettled with the KMA compared to the first couple of runs we've looked at today. Um, the flat westy flow carries on up to day 10, and then a bit of a ridge trying to build out to the west of the country by the 24th of July. It all looks rather cool and unsettled, I'm afraid. 
Unless that's what you like, and some people do, of course, in the summer. Um, but yes, that's midnight run, right? <laughs> again, with low pressures between Iceland, uh, between Scotland and Norway, I should say, another low out to west of the day. And then the top pushes through Monday through Tuesday, into Wednesday and Thursday, looking rather unsettled, warmest temperatures down in the far south of the country, but overall, it's a mixed bag. And then we head up toward days um, 8, 9 and 10, and we just keep shots of low pressure coming from off the Atlantic. There's an attempt to build some high pressure from the Azores there on the 23rd of July, but that doesn't really come to much. We just go back into that rather coolish and showery northwesterly flow again. And we get to the end of the GFS midnight run. Again, trying to ridge up the Azores high, but there's more low pressure in the Atlantic, so any attempt to build that high pressure up from the Azores is likely to be pretty uh, short-lived. And then the GM uh, looks like this. So once more, job of low pressure bringing unsettled conditions through the early part of next week. A little bit drier and warmer through the middle part of the week down in the south. And then we go back into those rather cool, showery northwest winds by the end of next week. Uh, day 10 may be a slightly more significant build of pressure from the Azores. That's the 22nd of July. Look at the 6th then. It actually goes off and running into quite a protracted spell of high pressure. So all is not lost. It's a potential, as always, for something to uh, <laughs> occur and to turn us drier and warmer into the last week of July. We end up looking like that, a little bit thundery for the south, but certainly a lot of dry and warm weather on offer there with the GFS 6 there. Let's just have a very quick look at the GFS ensembles and see how well supported that is. So it's not necessarily a warm outlet. It's one of the warmer ensemble members, but not out of the question we might be um, building higher pressure up there into the last week of July. It's certainly not without support from a few other ensemble members anyway. So, you know, there's a possibility that something might happen to uh, turn us drier and warmer beyond day 10. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let's say what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Webbers. Get them to subscribe too. And uh, we thank you so much everybody for doing that for us. Right, GM. Again, we've, uh, we're between areas of low pressure and midnight. On Monday, then the next trough moves through Monday through to Tuesday. Into Wednesday and Thursday, we keep low pressure influence going, especially so in the northern half of the country, we have a cool shower conditions to come. And then heading up toward day 10, there's a bit of an attempt to build uh, a ridge up from the Azores Bay on the 21st of July. But by the 22nd, we're back into low pressure, bringing showery conditions. And then the ECM again brings in the low pressure from southwest on Monday. We're under a trough of low from Monday through to Tuesday, then high pressure ridges up from the south from uh, Wednesday to Thursday, turns from dry and warmer in the south and south east, but low pressure still out to the north and the west. Um, perhaps a little bit more in way of dry and warmer weather from the east yeah, next week, especially so for the south and the south east. Still rather changeable up in the north, and we eventually end up going back into those cooler and more changeable conditions again, actually. By day 10. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometcho.com. No, very showery burst to come. And actually quite wet in the north of the northeast over the uh, weekend as well. Watch out for that. Into next week, we find showery weather coming in from the west and from the southwest. It'll be first half of the week. So those showers might be heavy and thundery. And then wet weather into the north and west in the middle to second half of next week. With showers along the spells rain always drier in the southeast corner. And eventually that more unsettled weather starts working its way back even into more southern and southeast regions. This is the option on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10. Gets us to the 22nd of July. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them, with low pressure over and to the east of the country and winds coming in from a northwesterly direction. So cool and showering, really, at day 10 there. In two weeks' time, these or this, hold on, is this the option? Uh, this is the option that we've got. Hang on. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There it is. Uh, to day 10, this is the option that we've got. What's happening here? There we go. This is the option that we've got uh, to day 14, I should say. And uh, this will get us to the whole blooming heck. What's going on, Gab? Right. In two weeks' time, I didn't say something else uh, and got myself into trouble. 
<laughs> into my side, this is the option. Bite your lip, Gav. Bite your lip. In two times, this is the option that we got. It gets us to the 20. Oh, and now our line's gone wonky. Her video's falling apart. It's all falling apart again. No, in two weeks' time, this is the option that we've got. It will get us to the 27th of July, 51 out of 50 members of the East Hill Tunnels. We're short of a trough of low in the Atlantic, a ridge down to south west, still looking pretty flat and westerly. It remains a very uninspiring outlook, really, I have to say, for uh, the second half of July. Uh, member CFS B2 finally, this is the latest 700 millibar height to nominee idea from a CFS for August. Remember, things change daily. No, today's idea is with low pressure B to the north, some sort of ridge in the Atlantic. Winds coming in from a westerly direction will bring, bring up the driest weather into the south and west and will be most unsettled up in the north. <coughs> And so, sorry again, everyone. And as far as uh, precipitation, uh, temperature anomaly is concerned, no signal. I would imagine it would be pretty, that scenario there would be pretty much as we've had through, through the summer, which is quite cloudy, quite cool, not overly wet, but a little bit mixed, you know, pretty much as, as the summer has been, really. Very, very um, mediocre. And precipitation-wise, again, not much of a signal. Probably relatively dryish, high pressure in the Atlantic, but some weather systems would be probable at times, especially so. In the north, we'll see. It's a long way off August. We've got the rest of July to worry about at the moment. Right, we don't. If you've enjoyed the video, please you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Webbies. Get them to subscribe too. I mean, thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. I'll just tell you what's happening on the channel over the weekend. We're going to have the uh, 6 a.m. UK Mobile forecast on both Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, we'll also have the ECMWF. Uh, 42 day forecast, UK and Ireland. We've got weekend forecast and 10 to 14 day coming up as well. And then on Sunday, we've got the fourth autumn update, which will be a QBO special. And we'll be live with your 10 to 14 day uh, and some long range at 6 pm on Sunday evening. And I know we've got the Euro final with England versus Spain coming up uh, later on in the evening. So uh, I will have that by stream wrapped up uh, by 7 pm. And, uh, and you know, you won't have to worry about um, about missing, you know, the football and whatnot. I wouldn't run it to 8pm anyway, but I, I have the uh, line uh, wrapped up at least an hour before uh, b before kickoff. Right, OK, well, you enjoy the rest of your Friday. I shall uh, get on with uh, recording some of those updates for the weekend. And uh, for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.